Aloha, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to another week of live Q&A. Here at Trauma Recovery University, I'm your host, Athena Moberg, and I'm so happy you've joined us, and I want you to know if you're in the right place. So who am I, and are you in the right place? I am an adult survivor of childhood sexual abuse, and I show up here every week with a different topic, and I serve the global community of survivors. Uh, fellow survivors of childhood abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse, although all forms of abuse really during childhood. So um, if that is you and you are a survivor, um, please feel free to just hang around and watch. You don't need to take part or um, send in your questions or um, chat in the chat box or tweet or do anything like that. I just want you to know that you're free and welcome to just sit and just listen or watch and partake. And there's no, there's no pressure. There's no techie uh, requirement to be here. You can, if you found your way here, you can just be here. So I'm so happy you're here. Every week we show up here uh, with a different topic. And when I say we, I mean the global community of survivors. There are a ton of you over on Twitter. And there are uh, 25 of you here just on the YouTube app. So um, if you have found us on our Roku TV channel, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for all of the five-star reviews on Roku. It really helps us um, get bumped up in um, ratings. And, and the higher the ratings we have on our YouTube channel and our Roku TV channel, then um, the we get bumped up in search and then more survivors of abuse know that there's a resource for them on their television <laughs> or in um, on the on YouTube or or wherever it is that that they're that they're hanging out so um, I have a fan going so I have a feeling I'm gonna have this one hair coming in like blowing in my eye the whole night now goodness gracious sorry um, you get to be here for the bloopers just like that and you get to be here with everybody else as well so if you happen to be on Twitter um, please use the hashtag no more shame and join the conversation. The whole goal is to shed the shame of our abuse. Why? Because it doesn't belong to us. <laughs> we didn't abuse ourselves. <laughs> we, we were abused by someone and that perpetuated a cycle of um, perhaps uh, different behaviors and coping strategies that are not really fantastic and that we're struggling with and that we would like to uh, get past. So um, welcome. If this is your first time, I am so excited that you're here. And if you have come back and you've been here before, perhaps you've been around with us for three years now, um, then I'm, I'm really excited that you're still here with us as well. And um, I consider it such an honor to come into your devices, uh, come into your homes, come into your earbuds. Um, I consider it such a privilege to be here with you. So um, again, my name's Athena Moberg, and I'm a survivor. Um, my abuse began um, very, very, very early on and was perpetuated through the generations, intergenerational uh, um, familial abuse and on both sides of my family. And um, I broke the cycle. I was a single mom um, at age 19, or I was actually 18. Um, my son was almost born on my birthday, on my 19th birthday, but he was born three days later. So, um, and I broke the cycle of sexual abuse. So my son um, was not abused in my home. And I am happy to say that we have a pretty good relationship now as far as like mother-son relationships go considering he's in his 20s and he doesn't need me for anything and like we just sort of check in with one another so um, I'm super excited about that and uh, but one thing that has stuck with me my entire life and I receive tweets and messages and DMs and emails and voice messages from my website um, and uh, messenger messages and posts in our Facebook groups and um, private clients send me messages or discuss during our sessions together. Um, the issue of food. <laughs> What's up with the food issues, Athena? Oh my goodness. Um, even our, um, our rest of our community, on Tuesdays there is another chat called hashtag sex abuse chat, and it's exactly the same time. So if you're here today, tomorrow show up at the exact same time on Twitter and type in the hashtag sex abuse chat and you'll be able to be met with a lot of familiar faces and um, they discuss topics that are pertinent to healing from childhood sexual abuse so 
Anyway, um, they had been discussing food issues and so many people were messaging me, hey Athena, I attended Sex and Beast Chat and they were talking about food issues and eating disorders and oh my gosh, and what's up with the food issues and oh my gosh, like if, if there's anything that I struggle with the most, Athena, it's food issues and why is it that food is connected to whenever I start to feel any feelings whatsoever, I'm starving and so then I go eat and then I feel better or, um, or gosh, whenever I start to... Um, um, have memories of, of any type of abuse in my childhood, I, I sort of find myself mindlessly eating. Um, why is that, Athena? Why is my, what is the connection between my abuse and my habits with food or my relationships with food? And um, there is, there's a, a huge, um, like, subgenre of our community that all struggle with food issues, whether it's um, gosh, I just don't even realize it and I've gone like the whole day and I haven't eaten anything. And it's not like I'm trying to lose weight, Athena. I can't actually gain weight. My body, I don't know, I just, I try to eat but I'm not hungry. I'm not going to force feed myself. I just, I'm so, 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 so skinny. I don't know what to do and it really bothers me. And my clothes don't fit right and they're too baggy. And, and people ask me if I'm sick all the time and it's really embarrassing and it causes me a lot of shame, Athena. And I just wish that I could gain some weight and I just keep getting smaller and smaller and I don't know what the deal is, but, but I just, I need help. What do I do? What do I do? And wh what does this have to do with my abuse? And then there's the opposite, which is, Athena, I've been struggling um, with binge eating disorder. I, I just, out of nowhere, I will just binge and I'll eat like an entire pizza. And I just always immediately feel shame and guilt right afterwards. So I know it's not that I was hungry. It's like something that's this weird shame cycle that I'm in, Athena. Oh my goodness, what is it? And then there's a whole other set of people that are like, Athena, in my 20s, I had anorexia. And then I sort of graduated and went into bulimia. And then I was binging and purging. And, um, and I rotted out all of my teeth. And now I have like fake teeth. And I have all these um, stomach issues, and I have um, gut problems. My gut is ruined, and it causes my skin to break out, and I have tons of acne, and I can't get any clothes to fit me right, and I have so much shame surrounding my body. And I ha and then there's body dysmorphia. I can't stand my body. I hate my body. Um, I just wish, and uh, I wish that my body would just. Um, if I had no body at all, if I was just this little bobblehead, I would be so much happier because I hate my body so much I can't even stand to look at myself in the mirror. And so I know this is attached to food, Athena, so what do I do? And I, I'm going to be honest with you guys, okay? Um, I struggle too with, with food issues and I'm still figuring it out. I don't have all the answers. I don't have the answers to all those questions. What I do know is that there is a huge discussion going on in the world right now, and we're going to be a part of it. <laughs> we're joining in and we're having this discussion tonight um, because we can. And I'm so excited to just create this sacred, safe space for you to all just come and, and join together and be supportive and kind to one another regarding food and food issues and I just I'm just excited I'm excited because um, I would I would be I would be lying if I said that all my food issues are completely figured out and healed and um, I I don't know like I would just be I would be lying if that were the case so um, I'm, I'm still figuring it out but I'm excited to be here with you and sort of talk about my food journey and answer your questions to the best of my knowledge and then I have a really great website that's survivor sensitive where you can get some answers as well and there are some great forums and um, I am contemplating sort of creating I already have um, Bobby and I have a whole bunch of safe groups on Facebook. And then about a year ago, maybe it was about a year and a half ago, one of the survivors and I were sort of talking, um, like sidebar, like in like Messenger. And I'm just going to relax and just hang out. How's that? I'm just going to sit here. Um, so one of the survivors and I, we were just sort of messaging back and forth with one another. And we were like, gosh, we should have a subgroup for food like food issues, um, like a healthy eating subgroup or like a group where we could talk about all things food related, um, 
with a survivor sort of spin or with a survivor sensitivity. And I was like, yeah, that would be, that would be pretty amazing. Like, I think that would be a, a good idea to do that. And then I never followed through. Life took over. And then, um, and I just was taking on a lot more clients, a lot more private clients um, wanted my individual attention, which, you know, when you are a helping professional, like many of you that are here on this channel are actually helping professionals and you are um, in the trauma field. You help trauma survivors like, like I do. And when, when, when individual clients need your one-on-one -on -one attention, um, it's a privilege and it's an honor. And then at the same time, you are trying to reach so many, right? You're trying to reach many people, as many as possible. And so it's just this delicate balance. And then when we're talking about food issues, trying to balance too much, all of a sudden that touches with food issues. Because when we, survivors, and, I, and if this does not apply to you, then take the best and leave the rest, right? So um, if you don't have food issues and you're like, my relationship is with food, I'm good. So then, then this video might not be for you and you can just come back next week. <laughs> but what I'm thinking of doing is, um, is I'm thinking of sort of starting like sort of a subgenre or like a sub community um, for food issues that, and with like a survivor sort of sensitivity. Um, and if that's something that interests you, I would love to know. Um, I would love for you to email me, no more shame project at gmail.com. And in the description section, put food issues. How's that? In the description section, put food issues and then email me, no more shame project at gmail.com. And let me know you're interested. And then I can, because this is a topic that I thought was just going to be a one week thing. And then all of a sudden, I'm just getting all of these, this influx of, oh my gosh, I found out today's topic is food related, Athena. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, th these are the questions I have. Like, wh where can I receive support? Do you have a form for this? Like, um, do, you, do you provide support on the topics of food? Well, first of all, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a doctor. I have my own food issues and I am, I'm willing to lead the charge. <laughs> I'm willing to be like, hey everybody, let's go this way. <laughs> and we'll go towards, you know, a healthy relationship with food. I'm totally willing to do that for all of my peeps because you guys are my family and I love you. Um, but I do want you to know that, you know, I'm not a dietitian and I will be wobbling my way through it, fumbling my way through it, and then sharing with you what I learned. And then you can do what I did or do something totally different. But if that interests you, please, oh my gosh, I just received an email. I just received an email that says food issues in the subject line. And, and so that was fast. I'm guessing this is a, this is a hot topic. Okay. So here we go. I better, I better move on so that I can help. I just got another one. I just got another email food issue. Okay. Hi everybody. <laughs> Okay, this has never happened in three years. Like I've never gotten that fast of a response. So I'm assuming, um, I'm assuming that 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 this is something that we're gonna that we're gonna do together. And I don't know how many nights a week. Maybe this will be like a different night a week that we discuss the food issues. But um, but if you're interested, yeah, please follow suit. Uh, can continue continue to keep sending these emails and and. Okay, I have five emails now. Okay, guys, I got the message. Keep sending the emails and let me know you're interested. In the subject line, put food issues. Email no more shame project at gmail.com. And then just let me know you're interested and we'll figure some stuff out together, okay? Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about food issues tonight. And I have some questions coming in. And uh, let's see here. I have one that came in from, from you all, and I didn't get permission to use her name. <coughs> Sorry, let me just take a sip of water. How about a big drink of water? Okay. For those of you listening like on an iTunes podcast, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't just gulp in your ear. <coughs> Girls got to have some water. Okay, so I just got a... 
this is one of you guys that found out tonight's topic and then you you messaged me. Great topic tonight. <clears throat> I stress eat all the time. I used to self-injure as a coping skill, but I knew if I cut the wrong way, I would die. Now I am seeing that stress eating can cause me to die too. Meaning obesity, you know, overeating, binging, binge eating disorder is deadly. Um, nothing to mess around with folks, for reals. So I, I'm seeing that stress eating can cause me to die too. It is also leaving me with a lot of pain because I need to have my knees replaced because they are bone to bone, but no doctor will operate on me because I am too fat. I am in so much pain. I try to exercise to lose weight, but it hurts too much. Now, I'm only eating one meal a day, but I'm so hungry. Any suggestions on what to do? Because my triggers are the worst sometimes. So this is simply only one message, and I'm certain they're all coming in. You guys, you guys are amazing. I have all these. Okay, I have. I'm so excited that you all are, this is amazing. I'm just, I'm so, I'm so grateful for you all right now. Um, we're going to, we're going to go through this together, y'all. Okay. We're all going to do this together and you're not alone. And I got some food issues. We all have some food issues apparently, but we're going to work through them together. And there is nothing that we can't accomplish if we do it together. We can get through this together. We're going to all, I'm happy to lead the charge, okay? Because, <laughs> um, you know, between anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder, body dysmorphia, I got like the, I got all of it going on. So I <laughs> didn't sign up to be a poster child. And um, there's more. Okay, there, I got to turn off my notification. Maybe if I close my email box down, you guys, otherwise I'm going to be distracted. Squirrel, 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 all night long. I'm going to turn, I'm gonna turn off my email box. I care about y'all's emails. I care about your emails. I, I'm so happy to receive them, but I'm going to keep glancing and, and glancing if, if I don't, if I don't um, exit out of my email box. Um, so in an effort to be respectful of your time, <laughs> I'm going to uh, close out my email box and then I will, I'll do my best and I'll go in there and I'll answer them, okay? So I want to address this question, okay? Um, stress eating. Stress eating is a, big, is a big issue for a lot of people. And I, I will come back to you with another video since this is sort of a subtopic of this topic. Stress eating, there, there is a chemical there's a reward chemical, like the reward system in the brain, and there's a chemical that actually goes to our brain, and um, and we have all these different chemicals that are going on through our body, and when we eat, certain chemicals are released, and it causes us to feel better immediately, and that is why eating sometimes soothes us in a stressful situation. However, <laughs> when we are eating as a coping strategy, as this, as this person um, so perfectly stated, it is equal to self-harm. Because um, just as if you cut the wrong way while self-harming, if you're cutting, um, if you cut the wrong way, you could die. If you, if you eat too much, you can die. As it's perfectly stated, the, per the person who sent this, this in. So... I want to encourage you that at the end of your message here, you say any suggestions on what to do because my triggers are the worst sometimes. What I would encourage you to do is what I have started doing, and that is finding one type of greens that you like. For me, it's spinach. I love spinach. Um, I would snack on, find one type of green, celery, spinach. Some sort of green, dark green, leafy, if possible, vegetable. And I would, I would snack on that and do that for a couple of weeks if you possibly can. 
Yes, I realize that it is not white sugar. Yes, I realize that it doesn't taste as good as other things that I love, like Oreo cookies. I love me some Oreo cookies. And it doesn't taste good like the salty snacks, like Funyuns. Funyuns are delicious. Cool Ranch Doritos are delicious. Um, but our body is actually craving different things than the stuff that we have been eating for, for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Our body was designed to crave different things. So what I have been doing lately, which has really helped me, is I've been snacking on celery, or I've been snacking on cucumber slices, or I have been snacking on broccoli florets, or I have been snacking on spinach. And I have noticed a difference in my body, and I have started adding um, spinach and kale to my smoothies in the mornings, and I have noticed a difference in my body. My body is much happier. Um, and I will, be, I will honestly sit here right now. Um, how many minutes are we into this video? I think we're about like 15 or 20 minutes into this video. And I will honestly just sit here right now with you and tell you transparently that every other area of my survivor journey has been one that I've struggled with just like everybody else because I've been sort of on this journey now for almost 17 years. Um, about 17 years, and I will tell you that I've conquered those areas in my survivor journey, and I don't have it all figured out. I still struggle with a lot of things, but the food thing I don't have figured out. I'm making healthier choices. I do follow an anti-inflammatory pyramid. Harriet, if you could pop up the YouTube card uh, somewhere here um, that it talks about um, nutrition for survivors, um, anti-inflammatory nutrition for survivors. I forget the name of the video, um, but if you could pop up a YouTube card so that someone could easily click it, and then down a link down in the description section um, for that particular video, that would be awesome. Um, because you guys... Um, that has helped me a lot and it's helped me. It doesn't just help me like feel better in my body and not hate my body because I struggle with a lot of that. Um, but it helps me cope and it helps me have energy and it helps me be patient and it helps me not melt down and it helps my triggers not feel as strong and it helps me feel more confident and it helps me to communicate more clearly. I mean, it helps me in all these different areas somehow because I am giving my body what it, like what it was designed to need, I guess. And it's anti-inflammatory. So um, a lot of us live with um, autoimmune issues. And that's when our body is attacking itself. And we have inflammation. A lot of us have chronic pain. Um, and this anti-inflammatory pyramid has really helped me in some of those areas. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm hoping that that will help you. Um, thank you for sending me in this question and thank you for all the other messages that I have received from you guys just in the past, like, I don't know, hour or so since I, like maybe two hours, I don't know, since I told y'all what the topic was going to be, but, um, but thank you. I'm so, so, so excited, um, to, to be sort of like on, I'm, well, I'm already on this journey with you, right? We're already on this journey together, this journey toward healing and hope and wholeness, um, healing from our, from our abuse. But I'm excited to be on this food journey with you as well because food issues, it's not like um, someone who messages me and tells me they are struggling with um, marijuana or they are struggling with um, prescription pain medication or Athena, I've, I've been um, drinking alcohol, um, like six pack of beer, like every day for, you know, the last couple years. It's just been, it's kind of just my habit now. It's just my, it's the rhythm that I'm in and I'm having a hard time like not doing that. And, or Athena, you know, I'm, I'm smoking cigarettes now and I never used to, but it helps calm my nerves. And, you know, food issues, you guys are not, they are similar, but they are not the same as other addictions or issues. 
uh, because we can't just not eat. Our body needs food. So um, my goal is that we walk through this together and we will feel better together and we will get healthier together and we will conquer our food issues together because there's nothing we can't do if we're doing it together, right? So what I would like to do, if it's okay with you, um, is I'd like to see, um, there are some questions. I know that there are questions um, coming in because I see them. So I'm going to just come over here and answer you guys' questions if that's okay. Oh goodness, there are a lot of questions. Okay. Heroes Don't Wear Capes says, by the way, you guys, I just love it when you all send in your questions. It's amazing. I just love being able to answer them. Heroes Don't Wear Capes says, well, I have had an eating disorder since I was nine, which seems crazy to me now. Nine is so young but I was never hospitalized because no one ever noticed. Also, a punishment I was given was no privileges, in quotes. <laughs> I could only have bread and water. I would attempt to go without even that, just to rebel against my abuser. I think that is where my eating disorder started. Oh my goodness. Okay, first of all, um, I feel very angry right now. I I feel very angry. <laughs> I am just going to sit here for just a second and um, I feel really angry. I feel really angry that you were only given bread and water. You're, you're a child. And I don't know if you have children of your own. Heroes don't wear capes. Um, but my son was a walking stomach. Um, he ate a lot, and I loved feeding him a lot. Sorry, I just needed a drink of water. Um, kids need food. I, um, I didn't have healthy food available to me when I was a kid. Um, I had the food that my caregivers decided they were going to buy. Uh, one of my most vivid memories was going to the Alpha Beta Market. Alpha Beta was the name of the grocery store, kind of like how we have Safeway now, and I guess in, in certain areas of the country there's a Piggly Wiggly or a Giant. Um, but we would go to Alpha Beta. And whatever was on the sale rack, the clearance rack, the stuff that was going to go bad like today, where it was dated, that was what we would buy. And of course, I wasn't allowed to eat it right when I got home, right? Because I was going to ruin my appetite even though I was hungry. Um, but I didn't have access um, to enough food and to healthy food. Uh, when I did get to eat um, at the time that I chose and eat the food that I chose, it was when um, during those times when my grandmother would come pick me up or my dad would come pick me up or my mom decided she wanted to like, you know, go to the beach or something like that. And then we would go through the drive through and uh, or go to a restaurant and then, you know, the portions are so big and you're just like, oh my gosh, yes, give me all of it please. Um, I want to just say to you, heroes don't wear capes, that um, that is abuse. Restricting a child to only bread and water, um, that's not humane. Um, and it's very wrong. And I'm so sorry that you went through that. <sighs> wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Nine years old is, is very, very uh, young. I've, I've not heard of children at that young of an age having eating disorders before. 
I'm not saying that it's not possible because it is. I'm certain. Um, I, I haven't studied it enough. This is a topic. I'm, I'm addressing this topic tonight because this is a topic that so many people have requested. And while I have done some research, it's going to take me a lot longer to become um, efficient in this particular topic and be able to uh, give you guys good advice. But heroes don't wear capes. That is abuse in just its purest form. Humans have basic needs, um, food, water, shelter, safety, clothing, love, acceptance. Um, and I'm so sorry you went through that and you're not alone. And I'm so happy you're on this journey with all of us. So, um, wow. Um, thank you for sharing. Joey says, hi, Joey. I thought my story was bad, and here I am sitting here whining because I'm stress eating, and there are people out there who only get bread and water. It makes you stop and think. Yeah. Joey, I want to encourage you that, you know, I understand your perspective and how it is that you're feeling, but all of our stories are, all of our stories are so valid. They are. Um, your story isn't any less valid than someone who had bread and water to drink, um, to eat and drink. Your, your story is still valid. Um, I stress eat myself, and um, there are many people who stress eat, and you're not alone, and your, your feelings are valid, and your story is valid. So um, let's see here. Broken Childhood said, thank you for sharing, Joey. <laughs> Broken Childhood says, I feel selfish because I restricted my own food. I was abused. I was depressed. I punished myself for so long. Oh, goodness. Um, I don't want to tell you how to feel, Broken Childhood. Uh, I do want to tell you that um, I don't think you're selfish. Um, restricting our own calories, it comes from um, a need for control because the rest of our life is out of control and it is one of the only things that we can control. I learned that when I um, met with a helping professional regarding my anorexia and my bulimia. And so with withholding, restricting myself was, um, it was a need for control because the rest of my life was so out of control. So you're not alone. And um, I'm sorry that you feel selfish, but I don't think you're selfish. So I hope that helps. Uh, Dawn says, stress eating and compulsive eating. Also, after my abuser died, I did not want anyone to touch me, and I put on a bunch of weight. Oh, girl, me too. Um, my dad died um, two years ago. You guys were all here with me. Many of you were here with me. I was just um, speaking with a friend earlier today, and I said, you know, my dad passed away on a Saturday, and um, I, was, I was with all of you hanging out here on a Monday, two days later, and I felt like that was where I wanted to be. So um, you're not alone, Dawn. When, uh, my, I didn't ever consider my dad one of my main abusers, but um, toward the end of his life, I had a very stark memory of him enabling my abuse and um, I would tell him about my abuse and he would tell me how sorry he was and then he would take me out to eat. And then he would always bring me back. He would always drop me back off where the abuse was happening. And uh, I never had the courage to be angry about that until, until he passed away. And now I'm angry about it. <laughs> um, it's wrong to not only enable the abuse, but to see the after effects and to ignore them and deny them. Um, on, the, on this topic, Dawn, uh, my dad 
would make fun of my weight. He, I would say, oh, I, I hurt my back while I was doing such and such. And he would say, well, maybe if you lost a little weight, your back wouldn't hurt so much. Or he would call me chubby, or he'd call me fat so, or pudgy, or he'd like touch my fat, like touch areas of my body and touch my fat. And he always did it in a playful way so that if I would call him out on it, I, um, he would say, I'm, gosh, why are you being so mean to me? And so then I would feel bad and apologize for being mean to him, for calling him out and asking him not to touch me because he was doing it in a playful way. But it was just, do you, I mean, do you see the mind fuckery that goes on with that? It's like, you pick on me, you call me fat, you touch me. I, I tell you to please not touch me. And then you're so wounded and injured that I'm asking you not to touch me. And then I feel bad that I've hurt your feelings. And so then I'm apologizing. And so then you win. And then you offer me a candy bar. It's like, I mean, bring in the clowns. Uh, that, that, that's just a, come on, really? Like, anyway. Um, but Dawn, I am a stress eater myself and a compulsive eater myself. And um, I have put on, I have put on some weight since my dad died. I could, uh, I could look up the video that I did a couple years ago when I hung out with you guys a couple days after my dad passed away. And I could probably see the, the rolls under my chin here that were not there or my chubby cheeks were not there. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, if my dad were alive, he would point out how I have a roll in my chin now right here where I guess it doesn't show up on the camera. This here. Oh, there we go. This. This right here. He would point out that. And he would point out how I have one of those little, like, a little mark right here with my arm. Or how, like, my side does that little thing. My mom calls that my bacon, my back fat. Or maybe I call it that. Maybe she started calling it that because of me. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, you see the you see the crazy making that goes on. All these body image issues. My goodness gracious. Oh, August says I use food as a comfort. Me too, August. Oh my goodness, me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Oh wow. Um, Connie says. Connie says, Con um, Connie, I'm going to butcher your last name, honey. I'm so sorry. But I hope you'll forgive me. Welcome, first of all, because I'm so excited you're here. And I don't know if I've ever had a chance to say hi to you before. Um, we've had a Connie here before, but I don't, I don't know if you're the same Connie. But is it Wagonect? Connie Wagonect? I hope I said it right. Um, Connie Wagonect says, I used to try to go as many days as I could without eating while living with my abuser. No one seemed too concerned. I am good. And I just ate the most amazing chicken and dumplings, LOL. High five, Connie. <laughs> um, I, uh, I used to do the same thing. In fact, I want to I wanna look at you all in the face here, Connie. Thank you for sharing. Oh my goodness. There are so many more. I'm just going to keep on going. I'm going to plow through all these, all these questions, and then I'm going to do screen share in a little while, probably close to the end like I did last week. But I want to look you all in the face, and I'm going to tell you this, okay? Because my, my son and I used to call this confession session, where he'd be like feeling really bad about something, and he's like, Mom, I think I need confession session. And so we'd sit together, and he would just – confess to me how he was feeling about some stuff or something that he did or something that he was thinking that he was really struggling with. Um, and, and then he always just felt better. Like, you know, oh, it feels good to just tell you, you know. Um, we had a really good relationship with him growing up. And then he left to go to the military and it's just been different ever since because he's older now and he's like a man. So, um, like all man. So anyway, Connie, I'm going to look at you in the face. I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> I did the same thing about not go, go as many days as I could um, without eating when I was younger. And um, I remember challenging my stepsister to copy me and the way that I was restricting my calories. Um, I was, uh, I remember one time I got the opportunity to model in a fashion show. I forget how old I was. I want to say I was about probably 15. 
um, maybe 16 at the time, and I was modeling in a fashion show. And in order for me to fit into a size five, um, I remember I wanted to wear this suit so bad. I just wanted to wear this fancy suit. It was like this beautiful ladies' pants suit, and it was like, um, I think it was Wet Seal. Wet Seal was sponsoring our fashion show or something, and then like Windsor Fashions, and um, I forget the name, but maybe it was Charlotte Roos or something, or there was all these different places that were like collaborating to do this fashion show in the mall, and I got to be one of the models. Anyhow, in order for me to fit into this size five, um, I didn't have the courage to make myself throw up. So what I did is I decided to go to the market and buy diet, uh, buy uh, um, laxatives. I didn't like the way diet pills made me feel because I got jittery. And so I didn't even have the courage to take diet pills. So I took the easy way out and I decided to buy laxatives. So I started off with the pink ones, okay, because they're like, you know, the lowest number of milligrams of of laxative stuff. Um, and I built my way up to the blue ones. The blue ones were like the highest number of milligrams. So uh, no one seemed to care. The skinnier I got, the more people complimented me. They all come, wow, you look so great. You look so thin. Oh my goodness, that suit looks so good on you. Um, talk about twisted. So thanks for sharing, Connie. Is it Wagonect? Wagonet? Hope I said it right. Um, thanks for sharing. And I want some chicken and dumplings if you have any extra. Send them on over. Eisen New says, I am mindless when I restrict and then I am obsessively thinking of food before I binge. Um, yes, 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 yes. I resonate with this. I resonate with this big time. Yes. Um, isn't it interesting how all of us survivors have very similar, have very similar narratives when it comes to food issues? Not one of these things that has come through have I been, huh, I've never heard that before. <laughs> interesting. Um, Dawn wants to know why there is no yellow in the room with you. Oh, she's used to seeing your emoji pillow or the yellow flowers. Okay, here goes, guys. I'm off topic. Um, okay. So I sold my house. I'm one step closer to starting the nonprofit for abuse survivors. And um, I'm going to be freed up emotionally. And I'm going to rent a small little one-bedroom place instead of this big old house. And I'm going to have less to clean, less to do. My husband's going to have less to pay and less to think about. And then um, there, I told you, I was actually going to make a separate video and tell you guys I sold my house. So um, here is what is left of my fancy, pretty little, pretty little room here. Let me just try to do this again. Here, there we go. Here's what's left. Nothing, no nothing, nothing, all gone. And there's my, there's my, my window. And there's my, there's my light. And, uh, and here's me. So there you go. There's your answer. I was going to make you a separate video, you guys, and tell you that I sold my house. Um, but I did. My husband and I sold our home. And uh, we're going to rent. And we're simplifying. And um, I'm one step closer to starting a nonprofit. And I'm, um, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. So... Thank you for noticing, Dawn. My emoji pillow is over at someone else's house right now where we're going to be staying for a month until we move into the place we're renting for one year. So thank you for asking. <laughs> okay. Um, Eyes and New says, it's weird because my eating behaviors have changed now that I'm an adult. It used to be simple. Yes. Um, I got to tell this to someone right now. One of you out there. One of you out there needs to hear this right now, okay? Back up a little bit 
to when I was telling you how I started with the pink laxatives and built my way up to the blue ones? Well, um, it started off with, with um, one pink one, then it went up to two, three, four, and then I'm like, why am I taking four pink ones when I could just take one blue one? And then it started off with one blue one, and then it was two, three, four. And then it got to the point where I wouldn't even allow myself to eat food if I wasn't taking laxatives with the food. Um, it was so bad. It was so bad. It was so bad that Mother's Day, when my son was two, so that would have made me 21. I was 21. Um, my dad took me out to dinner. Food. Um, took me out to dinner for Mother's Day. We had just gone and gotten our pictures taken at Olin Mills. <laughs> Remember Olin Mills with the soft focus? I love Olin Mills pictures. Um, and we went out to dinner. We went to Red Lobster, I remember. And I decided not to take laxatives that night. I decided that I would eat a normal meal, almost like reward myself for like Mother's Day or something, right? I had to be carried out of the restaurant. I was so sick. Really sick. Um, I had only been taking laxatives off and on for, well, I'd been taking them straight for about a year and a half, almost two years after I stopped nursing because I didn't put anything in my body that wasn't healthy and good while I was pregnant. And then while I was nursing, I was very, I was really mindful and wanted to make sure that I ate healthy for, for my son, of course, right? <laughs> um, but I had to be carried out of the Red Lobster there um, because I was so sick. So I want to give you guys a little a little peek at what um, this type of eating disorder, just laxatives, like just laxatives in air quotes. I was 21, and I am now 43, okay? I just turned 43. Um, at the very, at, on October 31st, I just turned 43. So we're talking 20 years. My body just got done healing itself, my gut and my insides and everything. Just finished healing itself to where I could actually not feel like I needed to take a laxative probably about four years ago, so when I was about 39. So from 21 to 39, goodness, what's that math? 21, 18 years, 18 years. I stopped the laxatives, and it took my body about 18 years to heal itself to where I didn't feel like I needed to take a laxative in order to function normally without getting too graphic so the long-term damage someone out there needed to hear that the long-term damage of eating disorders and what it does to your body is um is devastating and it is lasting the la it is lasting damage so i'm super glad that i'm getting all these emails um, that y'all are interested if anyone is just tuning in oh there's way more of you there's like 35 of you okay so um, a whole bunch of people have already emailed if you're interested if you're um, email me in the subject line put food issues and send it to no more shame project at gmail.com and let me know you're interested in learning about sort of a Focusing on healing food issues with a survivor sensitive approach, trauma informed approach. Um, we're not going to be yo yo dieting together. That's not going to happen. I'm going to make sure we do this healthy. We're going to do this the right way. So, um, in the meantime, just, just know that you're not alone. Hey, Jess. Jess is here. Dissociative Jess says so. Sometimes I don't eat. Sometimes I can't eat. I don't know. 
I don't know if it's anxiety, upsetting my stomach or anorexia, I feel like I'm in control, but I compulsively eat sometimes and I can't stop myself. It makes me gain weight in periods of high stress. I lift weights to counter it. I resonate with every word of what you said, um, except for I am not cool enough to be uh, to lift weights. I think the most I've ever lifted are like those little two pounders. So um, I resonate with everything you said, Jess, and I don't know if it's a control thing. I really don't. Um, perhaps I can bring on someone on the program here and like interview them about what they've learned about food issues um, and see if they know something and they can help us because we're gonna need some professionals. We're gonna need some dietitians up in this place because I'm not one. Um, and I don't know how to be a health coach, although some of what I do in some of my sessions is similar to a health coach because we talk about healing from a holistic approach, right? A whole body approach to healing. Um, so part of what we're doing is mindful eating. We're, have, we're doing more mindful eating. Um, but you're not alone, Jess, and I'm so happy you're here with us. Oh, my goodness. Um, SLC Metal Misfit. SLC Metal Misfit says, I hope I'm saying that right, unless it's like Slick Metal Misfit or something like that. Uh, SLC Metal Misfit says, Mother and father are narcissists who are verbally, mentally, and emotionally abusive. And as a child, my father was also physically abusive. I have issues with food my whole life, AKA anorexia. My partner and I are currently both in the process of healing and trying to gain weight since we both weigh about 105 pounds and we are both about five foot three, five foot one. Thank you for talking about this. Well. First of all, welcome, because I have not ever greeted you before. Yay, I'm so happy you're here. Um, second of all, you're welcome. I'm glad I'm talking about this too. And uh, you're not alone. And I'm so happy that you and your partner are in a place where you've admitted that you're having some food issues. As far as your parents being abusive and narcissistically abusive at that, I don't know you, but what I do know about narcissistic abuse is that it is um, it wears on your psyche, causes you to question reality, um, minimizes your own reality and your own experience, and it. Uh, is crazy making if they have been gaslighting you or pulling in some flying monkeys to torment you or they've launched smear campaigns against you or they've scapegoated you or um, any other slew of jargon that I could throw your way I just want you to know you're not alone and um, I've experienced all of that and could probably write some more books about it. <laughs> um, in the meantime, I did write a book, um, and it's called Yes You Can. <laughs> yes You Can Heal. Um, yes You Can Heal, no matter where you come from. And uh, I'm so glad you guys are healing, and I'm so glad you guys are are um, intentionally seeking after wellness. I want to encourage you both, SLC Metal Misfit. Um, I want to encourage you both. I want to look you in the eye right now, actually. I want to look you in the eye, and I want to encourage you, okay? Please, please, please establish and maintain some healthy boundaries with these toxic people that were in your life. I'm hoping they're not in your life anymore. These parents of yours. 
establish and maintain some very healthy boundaries with them, please. There's a book titled Boundaries, and there's another book titled Safe People. Harriet, put it down in the description for SLC Metal Misfit. In 24 hours, go down and click that, or go onto Amazon, or someone tweet out the link so that they can get the books. Um, I'm not an affiliate or anything, it's just I want you to get well. And once you're establishing and maintaining some healthy boundaries with these people that are in your life, I want to encourage you to consider going low, low contact to no contact. No contact would be fantabulous, but if you can't go no contact, low contact. Um, only hang out and communicate um, on your terms. And don't allow anybody to minimize your existence or your experience. Because what you've been through is real. And people will try to tell you that you're overreacting. And they'll try to blame you for everything. They'll try to blame you for all the problems, all the fights, all the disagreements. They'll blame you for your eating disorder. They'll blame you for everything. But I'm here to tell you that it's not your fault. But it is your responsibility moving forward. You're, you're taking responsibility to get well. You and your partner both are. And I'm so proud of you. So please, please, please establish and maintain some healthy boundaries with anyone that is toxic in your life. And then we will all heal together. Because I'm about five foot four, almost five foot five. And I don't have the same problem as you right now. Um, I'm no longer anorexic. I have actually um, gained some weight since my dad died. And I believe my body is holding on to extra calories in an effort to protect me from what I have no idea, but we'll figure it out together. Heroes Don't Wear Capes says, has, and by the way, thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank you for being here with us, SLC, Metal Misfit. Heroes Don't Wear Capes says, has anyone else had a relationship with their eating disorder and they treat it like a reliable friend? I have been able to be honest about my abuse and yet I'm still very secretive about my eating disorder. Oh my gosh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, now we're getting into some meat. Oh my goodness, okay, yes. <laughs> Um, I have treated my eating disorder as my bestie and I always thought my bestie had my back. <laughs> Turns out that wasn't the case. Um, but, but the fact that, um, you are recognizing this issue is so powerful and I'm so excited. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what I think you should do? Y'all, if all of you guys on Twitter right now, could um, send a tweet to Katie Morton, K-A-T-I-M-O-R-T-O-N, Katie Morton, K-A-T-I-M-O-R-T-O-N, and tell her we all say hi. Hashtag Kenyans. Oh, my goodness. So Katie Morton is a mental health professional, and she specializes in eating disorders. And if you go to katiemorton.com, you can download an eating disorder free workbook. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of that. That's what I should have used as my screen share today. Goodness, light bulb. Hello. So I would love for you all to check her out. Um, if you're on YouTube, go find Katie Morton and subscribe to her channel and tell her that Trauma Recovery University says hi and that we want we want to give her props and 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 tell her she's amazing. So um, Katie Morton. KatieMorton.com, and she specializes in eating disorders. So, man, oh, that's a great resource. Harriet, you got to put Katie Morton down in the comments section. Goodness gracious. Yes, yes, yes. I was very secretive about my eating disorder. In fact, when um, Heroes Don't Wear Capes, when I slip back into an eating disorder mentality, I am very secretive. Very, very, very secretive about it. I, if I am withholding calories, I pretend that I'm not. And if I'm stress eating, I don't let anybody know. If I'm sneaking food, I don't let anybody know. It's this strange relationship that I have. I do treat my, my wrong thinking that I have surrounding food, my relationship with food, I treat it like it's my bestie, like it's my best friend. But you want to know what? It's not my bestie. We're besties. 
all of us here, we are besties. But our eating disorders and our food issues, not our besties. No. So there's some straight talk. There's some real talk, right? Oh, my goodness. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, thank you, Heroes Don't Wear Capes. Everybody needed to hear that right now. Shai Sharon says, I lost a hundred pounds. Oops, I lost it. Where'd you go? Oh, I lost it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. My, I have a, a computer a software that I use, and it just went nuts for a second. Um, Shai Sharon says, I lost a hundred pounds last year, but I have a serious problem with food. I have a lap band, but I have binge. I, but I binge eat and I purge a lot. I am messed up. Okay, hold on. The record just scratched. We're all coming to a screeching freaking halt right now. Shy Sharon, I hope you're not only on Twitter. I hope that you are on YouTube right now. And I hope you can see me look you in the face and tell you, you are not messed up. You are struggling. And you haven't arrived yet. Oh, and you're human. Wow. Newsflash, right? You're not messed up. Okay? I want to encourage you to delete that sentence from your vocabulary. It doesn't serve you. It will not serve you to say to yourself, I'm messed up. I am messed up. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. You're going to probably find me saying some pretty crappy stuff to myself too. And feel free to call me out on it, please, because I want to be held accountable. But I'm going to tell you right now that you are not messed up. Someone tell Shy Sharon she's not messed up. In fact, don't tell her that. Someone tell Shy Sharon that she's amazing just as she is. She's amazing just as she is. Shy Sharon, you're amazing just as you are. And the fact that you're aware of it and you lost 100 pounds, I wish I could lose 100 pounds. Holy moly. Someone tell Shy Sharon she's amazing. Thank you. Goodness. Dissociative Jess says, I don't binge and purge. I binge and I starve. I can't find much information on it, especially not medical journals. More focus on the purge. You want to know something? You're right, because I've looked it up. <laughs> Isn't that something that we both looked that up and we can't find anything on it? What's up with that? Maybe we need to maybe we need to write something because I do. I go through these periods where I'll binge on something and then I'll be like, oh, I better like not eat some stuff just to make up for what I binged on, you know? So, um, yeah, uh, that's definitely, that's a, that's a thing. It's a thing. And there needs to be more information on it. So in our little whatever it is we're going to create with all these emails and messages I'm getting that are flying everywhere, if you are interested in this topic, we might have to create like another channel or something because I... YouTube is getting a little funky about um, stuff, not, not allowing you to do certain stuff. Um, if you're like in one genre and you're trying to switch it up, but um, if you're interested in food related issues, um, then send me an email with the words um, food issues in the subject line and then send it to no more shame project at gmail.com. Okay. And then we'll have fun and we'll create a group and we'll all go on this healing journey together and I'll lead the charge somehow and I'll grab a whole bunch of you to lead the charge with me. How's that sound? <sighs> okay. Yeah. Thanks for mentioning that, Dissociative Jess. Dis Jess. Because, man, there needs to be some more information on binging and starving. Kira says, I have suffered from severe IBS my entire life. And for those of you who don't know what IBS is, it's irritable bowel syndrome. It is like gastrointestinal pain is what that is. Some from diet, but mostly as a reaction to the abuse. My internist was not very helpful. So I adjusted my diet on my own and I'm getting better. High five, Kira. That's awesome. I'm so happy that you're getting better and I'm sorry that you're that your doctor was not very helpful. That really sucks. But I'm super stoked that you know what's going on and that you know that it's related to your abuse. Because remember, on this channel, we talk a lot about trauma-informed care. And trauma-informed care means that we have the left hand and we have the right hand. And the left hand is our trauma that happened during our childhood. And the right hand are our coping strategies that are sometimes not very healthy, like smoking, drinking, overeating, over-exercising, 
uh, gambling addiction, video game addiction, uh, shopping addiction, porn addiction, you name it. It's a coping strategy that is something we wish we could get rid of. And trauma-informed approach means that we don't just approach these things that we want to get rid of only. We approach them knowing that they came from somewhere. They came because the, there was trauma a long time ago in your childhood, and it is so, 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 so painful that every time your brain starts to think about it and tries to heal it, no, it's too painful. And so it numbs, stuffs, and avoids your body and your brain. Numb, stuff, avoid. Numb, stuff, avoid. Numb, stuff, avoid at all costs. Do whatever you have to do to numb, stuff, and avoid through all of these maladaptive strategies, these maladaptive coping strategies over here these maladaptive behaviors. We haven't adapted properly. We're not able to process this pain because it, shame hurts too bad. So let's numb it, stuff it, and avoid it. And so trauma-informed care is when we always keep in mind what this is and we deal with all of these things. And we always remember both of them. They both exist and they're both real. And not one of them is ever to be told, you don't matter. We should just get over you and forget about it. That doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help your trauma and it doesn't help your behaviors. So trauma-informed care and a trauma-informed approach always keep both in mind, okay? That's what we talk about on this channel, and I'm so glad you're here. So Kira, again, high five. Most definitely. I'm so stoked that you know what it is, and I'm so excited that you know that it's from your abuse. And I'm sorry that your doctor wasn't helpful, but I'm so glad that you're healing. So here we go. Let's see. Oh, oh, it looks like something froze, you guys. I hope that I'm not frozen anymore. Will someone let me know if, if I'm still frozen? That stinks. I hope it's not my Wi-Fi. Goodness. Heroes Don't Wear Capes says, I have left therapy. If my eating disorder is what is focused on, it is so threatening when peeps want me to part with it. Oh, I think I know what you're saying. During therapy, you, you've left therapy if, if, the, if the focus is eating disorder related because it's very threatening when people want to talk about our eating disorder because it's our bestie. <laughs> I'm pretty good. I'm a. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's what you meant. And yes, heroes don't wear capes. Um, it's interesting how we protect our eating disorder. Again, it is that is why it is so interesting that eating disorders are not eating problems. They are mental uh, wrong thinking problems. We have a wrong. We have a wrong way of thinking about food and our body. So. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, what I'm going to do now, now that that was all you guys' questions, thank you so much for participating. I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to do a screen share with you guys and give you another resource because I love giving you guys resources. So I hope that you've reached out to all the people that I've done slide shares with and you've said thank you to them. And remember, I tell you all of the credit and all of the accolades and all of the confetti should be directed towards them because they're the ones that have done all the hard work. And all I am doing is sitting here and talking about it and sharing it with y'all. So none of the credit goes to me. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, one more question. One more question and then I'm going to do the screen share. I think the reason eating healthy became important to me is that my dad would scream at me when I said bologna and other processed foods were giving me a stomach ache. <laughs> yeah, uh, sounds like if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Kira, dad was in a little bit of denial because bologna is pretty cheap and we didn't have to spend very much money. <laughs> Our parents, oh, and you want to know what, what uh, on this topic, Kira, and anyone else who can um, relate to this, do you remember, um, uh, there's, there's a song, I wish I had an Oscar Mayer wiener, or whatever. And then there was like the um, Oscar Mayer, B-O-L-O-G-N-A, right? 
Um, and, and like, it looks like it's pronounced bologna, but it's like, it's bologna. Um, so I, Kira, and anyone else out there who can relate to this, my abusers wouldn't even allow me to have Oscar Mayer bologna. Not only was I not allowed to have like healthy food and good food that wasn't spoiled, but I wasn't even allowed to have brand name shitty food that was unhealthy. I had to have the store alpha beta brand that was like the thick, weird, orangish color, or sometimes it was the pimento loaf. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wasn't even allowed to have good shitty food. Brand name shitty food. I had to have the store brand. And of course it went bad that day. And you know that smell of like lunch meat, processed lunch meat, when it's like starting to like go bad. And oh, yeah. I wasn't even allowed to have like brand name unhealthy food. So, um, let's see here. Oh, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. That is what I truly wish to be. Because if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, everyone would be in love with me. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Ugh. Okay, we're really moving on to the screen share now, but that was so awesome. Thank you, Matt. Okay, y'all. So I'm going to do a screen share with you. And I'm going to give you my favorite, awesome, amazing peeps. Give you another resource. I love giving you resources. Okay. So this is one of my most favorite Resources. This is just a blog post, actually, but I'm going to give you the full resource. So this right here, hopefully you can see my mouse. I'm hovering over right here. This is Havoka, and Havoka.org is an awesome place. It is not quite the happiest place on earth because that tagline is taken and trademarked. But this is help for adult victims of child abuse. And this particular, and down, by, by the way, down in the description section of this video, you will find all the links. I already put them there. Harriet doesn't even need to. I put all the links there to this, to the forum, to the contact tab, all of it. So you guys could get in touch with them and say thank you to them or give them all the credit for everything good. So I want to read this to you. This is a blog post on. Uh, adult Victims of Child Abuse website, okay? This is for survivors, and it is all about the food connection. And it is written by these two gals named Suzanne Scott and Lynn M. Constantine. Now, I want to let you know that they have written a book, and it's titled Migraines. And it's all about migraines um, and their connection with food and their connection with trauma, childhood trauma, childhood abuse, specifically childhood sexual abuse. So I highly recommend that you um, check out their book. If you were to go to Amazon right now, you would, if you typed in Suzanne Scott and Lynn M. Constantine, you would find a book called Migraines. And I haven't read it in its entirety yet, but I am super excited to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and read this blog post to you. And hopefully it resonates with some of you. And then I will be respectful of your time and let you all go for the evening, okay? Uh, if you are not interested in listening to this blog post, um, then you are um, free to go. And if you are interested in continuing the topic of food issues as they pertain to survivors of child abuse, then please, in the subject line of an email, any email, type the word food issues and then send it to No More Shame Project at gmail.com and let me know you're interested and I will I will invite you into this journey that I'm getting ready to have, okay? 
So um, here we go. I'm going to start right here where it says many of us, okay? Many of us. Many of us survived the experience of childhood trauma, in part through our relationships with food. We used treats to comfort ourselves. We compulsively stuffed ourselves with food to avoid feeling angry, anger or grief or frustration. We gained weight to protect ourselves from re-victimization. We starved ourselves, driven by an inner fear of being ugly and unacceptable, or by the belief that once we started eating, we'd be unable to stop. No eating, overeating, eating compulsively, thinking about eating, trying not to eat, eating and vomiting, eating and feeling guilty, some version or combination of these behaviors troubles many survivors. Certainly not all survivors have such intense relationships with food, but for those who do, the struggle to end the process of using food in all the old familiar ways can be difficult and painful. Here we go, ending the guilt. Sally Kendler, a registered dietitian at the Francis Stem Nutrition Center, works with outpatients in the center's eating disorder program. She is quoted saying, many people I see are survivors of childhood abuse. The first thing I do is try to remove their guilt about eating. Interesting, love this Sally R. Kendler, MSRD registered dietitian. Next paragraph, according to Kendler, Many survivors feel guilty because they crave carbohydrates, pasta, potatoes, bagels. She's quoted saying, they should in fact be eating those things. 60% of our total calories should come from carbohydrates. In current thinking about nutrition, carbohydrates are the heroes, not the villains. Although that does seem to change periodically. They are broken down into sugar, which the body uses at its, as its first line of fuel for metabolic activities. Complex carbohydrates like potatoes and pasta are excellent foods because they are turned into sugar more slowly than simple carbohydrates like sugar or honey. If a survivor suffers from constant low-level anxiety, it is no surprise that she craves bagels and pasta, which provide steady, sustained energy. A light bulb moment came on for me earlier when I read that. I couldn't wait to share this with you all. If there's one thing I try to convey, it's that there are no forbidden foods, says Kendler. That is not to deny, however, that certain foods may trigger counterproductive eating behaviors in some people. Food triggers high fat foods like ice cream, cheese, chocolate, and baked goods are common triggers for binge eating. I know I looked at that, you guys. I looked, I looked here. I looked here. Ice cream, cheese, chocolate, and baked goods? That sounds amazing. <laughs> and they're common triggers for binge eating. I was like, dang it. One person may be able to eat two ounces of cheese, for example, and then never give it another thought. But someone else might find that eating those two ounces of cheese throws him into a cheese eating frenzy and then into an anything eating frenzy. Many people are surprised to learn that it is the fat, not the sugar, in these foods that seems to set off the problem. Many nutritionists now believe that people who think they have a sweet tooth may really have a fat tooth. It's not entirely clear why given foods should trigger overeating. Some scientists suspect a biochemical cause. In this view, the survivor's overstressed system lacks some key chemical needed for normal functioning and desperately seeks to restore balance by demanding large quantities of food that contain similar substances or chemical building blocks. Other scientists, however, believe the binging is a behavioral adaptation to stress, a habit that can be unlearned, though with difficulty. I believe that we can unlearn everything, you guys. The brain is plastic. Neuroplasticity is what gives this community hope. Oh my goodness. If we can learn something, that means we can unlearn it. So exciting. Next, um, I'm starting right up here at the top with people. 
people often are most susceptible to their triggers after a period of strict dieting. Too restrictive regimens frequently lead to feelings of deprivation, which ultimately end in binging. Binging then leads to the guilt loop. I must be bad because I cannot control myself. And that's why some of our, our listeners, you guys on our, on our Twitter chat stream and on our YouTube feed say, I, I must be bad, I am so messed up, which isn't the case. This guilt can lead to an all or nothing despair. I've ruined it, so why not eat? And I want you guys, um, I want this, this phrase right here to be what you take away. This is wrong thinking. I've ruined it, so why not eat? And I want to encourage a lot of you that struggle with anorexia nervosa or bulimia. This, your version of this could say, I've ruined it, so why not eat less? Like, if you've done something wrong, you decide that you're not going to eat for a couple of days, or you're already withholding calories and deciding not to eat for a couple of days, and then if you mess up, you're like, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, you decide to not eat for longer. So I just, I want to encourage you that, that it's not always, it doesn't always go towards the eating. Sometimes it goes with the restricting of calories. So I'm right here on a diver, oops, a diversion from pain. That's where I'm going to start off right now. For many survivors, obsession with food is a way of diverting inner attention from the pain of past sexual abuse. I'm gonna pause, I'm pausing right here. You guys, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about trauma-informed care. Whenever our brain starts to remember our abuse, our subconscious wants to numb, stuff, and avoid. Numb, stuff, avoid, numb, stuff, avoid. So our obsession with food is, is the way that our, so for some of us, it is the way that we divert attention or numb stuff and avoid our past sexual abuse or even abuse in the present. And that's if you're currently in an abusive relationship. Kendler worked with a young anorexic woman who during the process of being treated for her eating disorder remembered that her father had abused her as a child. As treatment progressed, she gradually became aware that the abuse was still going on. Two years later, this woman's relationship to food is healthy in part because of help she received in Overeaters Anonymous. Now you guys, this website here, Overeaters Anonymous, I believe it's oea.org or something. Um, super awesome. If you can find a local chapter, if that's something that you're into, otherwise I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start a group and we're gonna just figure it out together, so. Um, but yeah, Wayne Calloway, MD, an endocrinologist in private practice in Washington, D.C., often treats survivors who use food to pad themselves as a defense against future assault. He's quoted saying, they represent a significant subset of the people I treat for obesity. The typical characteristic of that person is that she diets and loses weight, but as the pounds begin to disappear, she becomes more and more anxious. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Oh my gosh, this is so me, right here, right here. That's me, right there. I would, I would diet or exercise and lose weight, and the more weight I lost, I would get more anxious, more anxious, more anxious, more anxious, because my subconscious was like, um, hello, you're looking pretty good there. Um, you are welcoming um, some abuse is what's going to happen. Um, and like, I don't know if that was just something that was like left over from childhood or what, but I distinctly recall feeling that way. Dangerous physical consequences. I have a feeling um, that this is going to ring with some of you, okay? Although food may be entangled in the complex emotional effects of abuse, the result ultimately may be serious damage to the body. According to Callaway, severely restricting food intake can lead to short-term and long-term problems. The person loses a lot of water in the beginning and then after about three to four weeks of dieting, when she begins eating again, she begins having serious problems with fluid retention. If she is able to continue on her semi-starvation diet, her metabolic rate gets slower and slower. So she burns fewer calories and feels tired and cold. 
The news is equally bad about yo-yo dieting, in which few pounds come off only to be what put right back on. Researchers now believe yo-yo dieting can have a detrimental effect on the heart. Here we go. This is the, this is the deal right here. Making friends with food. When Kendler's clients ask for nutritional advice, they're often surprised by her laid back, take it slow and easy, be kind to yourself attitude. Sometimes they say they're afraid I'm not going to let them lose weight, she said. Kendler's clients participate in a multi multidisciplinary program that includes group and individual therapy. In her nutritional counseling sessions, she works with them on changing small aspects of their behaviors and attitudes about foods. In one session, for example, she might suggest that they try not to eat anything after 8.30 at night. Or she may ask them to look at their caffeine intake or their fat intake and cut back slightly. But we have to be careful here because there are a lot of survivors who become fat phobic and will try to avoid fat at all costs. That was me. Oh my goodness. When my son was little and I was in the middle of all my diet pill idiocy, um, I would only allow myself to drink non-fat milk and eat 99% um, non-fat bread and non-fat turkey and non-fat mayonnaise. And that was all, and I only ate one meal a day, like a non-fat everything turkey sandwich with non-fat milk. And that was my, that was, that was me. That was what I did. And then I took laxatives. Oh my gosh, you guys, totally not a good situation. We're almost done with the, with the article here. Kenler's step-by-step -step approach to making friends with food acknowledges that survivors often find moderation a hard road to follow. Why? Let's just pause here for a second, you guys. Why do we find moderation a hard road to follow? Because as children, we have black and white thinking. It's all or nothing. We are either good or bad. The world is either scary or safe. We are either, we are either um, doing good or we're doing bad. We're either being abused or we're not. It's all black and white. And so for us to find moderation, something that we can handle, is very, 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 very difficult to do. We often don't know how to do moderation. So as people who were subjected to egregious violation of their internal limits, they may see life as extremes. For some, any restrictions may feel like they're being controlled by another's idea of what's good for them. One therapist said she dislikes the word moderation because it sounds like as much as your mother wants you to have. Learning to hood our hungers. Learning to eat when we are hungry, stop when we are not, and pay reasonable attention to the kinds of foods we eat is not easy. It involves turning all of that food-obsessed energy towards something else. It means reclaiming the natural response to food that we were born with and acknowledging one more way in which the natural order has been turned upside down by the child abuse. Yes, our world was turned upside down by our child abuse. Oh my goodness gracious. Last part of the article, to develop new behaviors and attitudes about food, it is important to learn about nutrition, which is what we are going to do together. Email me in the subject line. Put food issues and send me an email to no more shame project at gmail.com and we will get going together. Last sentence, but it may be even more important for us to learn how to listen to ourselves about our hungers, the unmet cravings for safety, acceptance, and love that have become entangled with food. If you too survived in part with the help of your relationship with food, healing that relationship is one aspect of the larger healing process. Yeah, and so if you click right here, guys, it'll take you to Amazon. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just click and show you. See, it'll take you to Amazon, and this is their book, Migraine, The Complete Guide. It's a comprehensive resource book for people with migraines, their families, and physicians. And they talk a lot about childhood trauma. So, um, yeah, and this here, Havoka, this is a great, great, great resource for you guys. They have a forum, they have all kind like their, their blog, their, their blog posts um, 
their blog posts are so incredible. And here I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna look at you guys in the face now. Okay. So yeah, their blog is amazing. They're, that is a great resource for you guys. And I hope that you enjoy connecting with them. Wow, I still have a whole bunch of you. There's like 35 of you still. Yay. And then the, plus all of you on Twitter. Let's see if there are any closing remarks or closing questions. Otherwise, I will say aloha to you all. Let's see here. Oh. Um, Overeater Anonymous is OA.org. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> and you guys, oh, everybody, let's send Dawn a big happy birthday. Oh, and you know what? You guys, I think it's Simmy's birthday. Am I, for, am I remembering it right? It might be Simmy's birthday too. It is Dawn's birthday for sure. So I believe her Twitter handle is Song Warrior. Is it Song Warrior? Hey Matt or Heather, will you tell me if if Dawn's Twitter handle is Song Warrior? I think it is. Um, let me know. Um, but you guys, we gotta wish Dawn a happy birthday. I would sing, but man, y'all do not want to hear me sing. I mean, I like to sing. Oh, it's Song Warriors at Song warriors and wish her a happy birthday from her family we are her family so happy birthday and i think it might be simmy's birthday i'm almost positive also um but happy birthday to you guys i forget birthdays just so you know i'm super duper duper bad at birthdays like i'm really bad i forget all of my family's birthdays um and even when it's like my son or my daughter-in-law's birthday like i purchase gifts and cards and then I go to mail them and then I don't mail them and for like a year and even Bobby's birthday I have like four birthday cards for Bobby and I've never sent them I have birthday gifts and I never sent them I still have them I packed them up in a little box yesterday I'm like I need to mail all of these when I move into this other place and so I'm really horrible with birthdays and I don't know there's some sort of a block there I'm not sure exactly what it is I think it has something to do with childhood stuff. Like everything has to do with childhood stuff, I'm sure. But anyway, I'm really bad with birthdays. But if you all could wish Dawn <laughs> a happy birthday, that would be amazing. And um, many, many, many thanks to all of the volunteers, to Kalisha and Maggie and Jody and Poppy and Heather and Matt and Jack and... Um, Oh my gosh, I feel and I feel like I'm forgetting a whole bunch of people. I might be forgetting a whole bunch of you, but there's a whole bunch of you that volunteer and make this weekly um, this weekly show event <laughs> possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to be respectful of your time and let you all go. Um, but please come back next week, Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. We are here every single week. And um my name is Athena Moberg, and I absolutely love helping you guys with all of your food issues and just break the cycle, break the cycle of abuse in your, in your family. I love doing that. So thank you for joining me here and for hanging out with me and for being just my favorite part of my whole week. And um, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Uh, same time, same channel, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here, Tunnel Recovery University. So um, thanks so much, you guys. Bye.